Hello, Turks and Caicos. E.J. Sanders here. Since entering frontline politics in June 2019, and particularly during the country's preparation for 24-hour curfew, one of the things that has surprised me, and not in a good way, is that there are Turks and Caicos Islanders, including women, children, and the elderly, who are currently living in an abject poverty. That is, people sleeping in cars, staying in homes without indoor kitchen and bathroom facilities, etc. Now, I don't know the exact number. But even if it's only one of us, it's one too many. During the premier stimulus package address, she stated that, and I quote, "The government has increased the social welfare budget by 100 percent, and that from this increased amount, an additional 500,000 has been added to the budgetary allocation to further boost the home health program." End quote. Before that proposed increase, the budget for social welfare was approximately 1.9 million. I don't understand why a government enjoying a strong economy with approximately 200 million in savings would allow Turks and Caicos Islanders to continue to live in abject poverty. Even the strategic priorities of the Social Welfare Department, which is, and I quote, to strategically transform the department through restructuring, resourcing, and training so that it is better able to respond to increasing and varied social needs, as well as to conform with international standards, especially as it pertains to child safeguarding and food. Doesn't include it as a concern or addressing it as a priority. It is unacceptable to have trucks and kickers islands living in abject poverty, especially when we have the resources to pull them out of it. As this is an election year, I expect that someone will remind me that this issue didn't start under this government. But that is irrelevant. What is relevant is that we need to treat this with the fierce urgency of now and fix it, and keep it fixed. As a people, we are better than this, and we will rise to the occasion. Now, I'm not sure when the general election will be called, but I'm calling on the Social Welfare Department to to make poverty alleviation its number one priority, and for it to prepare a poverty alleviation plan that can and will permanently lift every Turks and Caicos Islander that is currently living in poverty out of it. On forming the next government. The Progressive National Party will ensure that the Social Welfare Department has the necessary resources to achieve this goal. Achieve it we must, and achieve it we will. The most vulnerable among us need our help to pull themselves out of poverty, and when that happens, they will not only increase their standard of living and quality of life, they will also reduce their exposure to outbreaks such as this COVID-19 pandemic. While we stay at home to save lives. Let us remember the most vulnerable among us, that is, those who do not have the means to keep themselves adequately safe. In closing, our condolences go out to the family of Mr. Dudley Liebert. Dudley was a friend and family to many of us, and he he will be dearly missed. May his soul rest in peace and rise in glory. I trust that you and your loved ones are continuing to keep safe by staying at home. If any of you are suffering from COVID-19, I pray that you have a full and speedy recovery. May God continue to watch over us, and may He bring us through these trying times.